Skull, everyone. Greetings and Happy New Year. It is 2024. In today's video, I'm going to go over 2023, what it has meant to me, and looking into 2024 and beyond. And there's going to be two main pieces of what I discuss in this video today. The first will be the 2023, you know, my review, looking back on uh, the entire year. And that one, that one's going to focus mainly on balancing the scales. And in 2024 and beyond, we're going to have a little discussion about thinking for yourself, critical thinking, and some lessons that I've learned in my life. This is probably going to be fairly long, but sometimes they have to be fairly long. So pull up a coffee, have a seat, and let's get rolling. 2023 was for me a landmark year. I am closing in on 50 years old, five decades of living on this earth in this iteration of myself. And very few years have had as much of an impact on me as 2023. 2023 saw for me, came in with high hopes. When 2023 began, I was deeply in love. And I was getting married to what I had considered the love of my life and the final love of my life. I was convinced that this was the case. And in May of 2023, the love of my life left for someone else, citing three main things, a, a bunch of things, but the three main things that matter. Number one, I wasn't physically attractive. She wasn't attracted to me. Number two, she was afraid of my work, of, of AI taking my job and of her having to be the one that makes the money in the house and not me. And three... COVID and the vaccine, which we're probably not allowed to say because they'll silence that, but left some problems for me that I have been working through since all of that. And so with because of those reasons, amongst a bunch of little reasons that didn't matter, uh, I was put on a path, a very, very painful path. And 2023 saw for me the third evil of my life, that would be the evil of carelessness, careless evil, not born of malevolence, but of carelessness, of Machiavellianism. And I bring these up not only just to review the road that I've walked in 2023, but these are lessons that can be learned as well for anyone else. And that comes into balancing the scales. And I call what happened, and, and that individual in particular, the third great evil. And I specify not of malevolence, meaning it was not intentionally done with the point of being evil, but that does not change what the action was. Careless evil. Doing what you have to do to get ahead, to get a material gain at the cost of whoever you have to do it to. Now, in our culture, in our society, we consider that winning. In fact, it's celebrated to destroy other people if it gets you ahead. They call that savvy. They call that getting ahead. They call that looking out for number one, you. Regardless of the destruction you leave behind you, this is something that we consider heroic and good in our culture overall. Though most of us know that it's not. That destroying others comes with a cost. Everything that you do, every action that you do, has a cost, either a positive one or a negative one. The more severe the action, the greater the cost you will incur. Now, I call that the third great evil of my life. 
and the fifth great tragedy of my life. When I was 13 years old, I was told that I walked the nine, the path of nine, the number nine. And these are sacred numbers. And I'm not going to get into what all that means in this video. It's not important. But the path of nine, uh, if I look at evil, three evils, five great tragedies, that brings us to the number eight. And that just leaves one more thing for me to encounter in, in this iteration of life as a lesson. So I need to, I personally need to take these as a lesson. And while 2023 saw the great, the third great evil and the fifth great tragedy of my life, I see 2023 as a great year. I don't see it as a year of negativity, even though it was wrought of negativity. I see it as a year that put me on a path to reach what I was supposed to do, to reach what you would call your destiny. I had gotten comfortable, and I had lost my purpose. And I lost my purpose because I had fallen in love and let that become my purpose. Now, for men, that should never be your purpose. Love should augment you and enhance your life, not be the reason why you live. Otherwise, you'll be totally torn down, like I was. So I hear, you know, when you get on social media and you see a lot of, uh, you know, people had a bad year. And, and, and to be honest, I see that every year. Every year people complain that this was, their, this was a horrible year and they're going into 2024 hoping that it's better. It seems like it's a pattern that we can fall into. But when you look back at that year, look at what you've accomplished. Look at the good things that you've built off of instead of focusing on the negative things. And the image I've chose to use for today is Anubis, who's in this image right here, this video. And Anubis is the Egyptian god of death, the funerary cult, etc. Which sounds ominous. It sounds dark. And it's really the opposite of that. In Egyptian mythology, once a person died, they would go on to the afterlife where they would be judged by Anubis. And he holds a set of scales. And those scales have different names depending on which book you're reading, but we'll call them the scales of truth. On one side of the scales, he places a feather. On the other side of the scales, he will place your heart. And if your heart is heavier than the feather, you have failed in that life you may be destined at that point to go off to the eternal dark, to be punished, or you may get to come back and relearn your lessons. The important lesson of all of that, though, is the scales. It's balancing of the scales. And balancing of the scales means many things to my 2023. First, it reminds me that every action has a consequence for everybody. That is what they call the cosmic law. What that means for you is if someone does you dirty, does you wrong, know that every action has a consequence and that those people will one day have to pay the price for what they've done. It's a small, maybe it's trifling, maybe it's larger. The key is that it's not you, it's not up to you to collect that, that toll. It's not up to me to be the punisher of those who have done wrong to me. That is what we call vengeance. And vengeance may feel good at the time, but ultimately leaves you with a hollow and uh, empty interior. 
vengeance solves nothing, and in many cases will des- you will destroy yourself through the act of seeking vengeance. So it is, to me, per- or pointless to wish ill on people or to attempt to go after them to right, wrong- to right perceived wrongs. Okay. No matter how great those wrongs may seem, those people will pay in due time. They will lead their own lives down into a pit of their own construction. And you just have to know that that's going to happen. And you have to realize that you're not probably not going to be there to see it. And that's okay. It's part of evening the scales. Cosmic law, whatever, keeps those scales balanced. This is why it's important Number also, additionally, to not dwell on those who have done you wrong and wish ill upon them. Because the simple act of you sitting there wishing ill upon people who have done you wrong is you yourself putting out that type of vibe. And all that does is hurt you because it just comes back to you and you continuously pay the price of your own thoughts. So you want to try to uh, avoid that. You want to try to step above that, as hard as that may be. But double underline that point, dear listener. Every action that you do, every vibe or vibration that you put out in this life will come back to you, for good or bad. You may think you've gotten away with something, but it will catch up to you one way or the other. Live your life knowing that that is the case. There's a lot of people who think they've gotten away with a lot of nasty things. And one day they find out. And, then I, you know, again, I'm almost 50 years old. I've seen some of those people. I've seen life catch up to those people. So I know it does happen. It may not happen as fast as I'd like it to happen. And I know that I may not see it, and I just hear about it later. But it will happen. It takes us to another part of balance, the scales. So knowing that that allegory exists, that we want to make sure our heart is not heavier than the feather, we want to choose to live a life that will produce that outcome. This is why it's important to not be led by your emotions. This is why it's important to have the ability to stop what you are doing and thinking and step back out of yourself for a moment. To recapture your frame. If you let your emotions lead you everywhere you go, you will inevitably overstep into realms that you should not have stepped into because your heart led you there out of sadness, out of anger, out of a need for vengeance. And it will come back to you, whereas the rational mind may have been able to halt what it was that you were attempting to do. Balance is a part of everything. The duality of nature is everywhere. It's all around us, male and female. Men and women work best together, not at each other's throats and opposed to each other. Yet, in today's society, we are told that we should hate each other, that men have oppressed and enslaved and thus should be punished. This leads us nowhere. This just keeps us separated. The duality of nature, yin and yang. Yin and yang, I should say, not yin. Yin and yang. Black and white. Keeping that balance is important, positive and negative. We are taught to shun the negative and fear the dark. But the simple truth that I've learned is that extremes on either end lead to nothing. Too much light 
blinds you. Too much darkness shrivels you. Too much positivity deadens you. Too much negativity hardens you. For me, it's about finding the balance. You need good with evil. Twenty twenty three was a very evil year for me. It will be a year that, when I'm lying in my deathbed looking back on the landmark years, will stick out for me as a year of great heartbreak and sorrow, but also as one of the greatest years of growth in the duality of life, the duality of energy. It took intense pain, sadness, heartbreak, and careless evil to allow me, on the other hand, to grow, to find my path, to strengthen my body, to sharpen my mind, to find my spiritual roots once again. That without that intense hardship, pain and suffering that I suffered in 2023, I would not have gained what I have gained in 2024. You can't have good without evil. If everything is always good, that leads to stagnation. You have to test yourself. You have to put yourself through the forge. You have to be in pain for you to grow as a human being. And that is the scales. Balancing the scales. Seek balance in your life. I call it the pillar or the triangle. Mind, body, spirit. You need to keep those things in balance and in check. You cannot neglect one and expect yourself to be strong. If you neglect your body, then your mind and your spirit will atrophy. If you focus only on your body, then your heart becomes dead. And you become a shell of a person who's got a very strong body. All of those points of the pillar or the triangle, depending on how you feel like looking at it, need to have energy put into them and reinforced. You must find balance. In 2024, I seek growth, but I also seek to perfect that balance. That is where... I am headed into 2024. So that was my 2023 in review. One of the greatest years of my life. It's all about perspective. Now moving into the second part of what I want to talk about going into the new year, and that's critical thinking. And for this discussion, we have to step back to the second great evil of my life and the fourth great tragedy that I undertook. Now, it's been a number of years since I have gone through one of these. I had a lot of these when I was younger. Most of the evils and tragedies happened rapidly uh, when I was young, which helped color me who I am today. The second evil and fourth tragedy happened in 2009. So that has been 13, no? Uh, Desert Viking can't do math. 14, 15 years ago this is the last time I've had a tragedy, you know, before 2023 landed on me. And the second greatest evil was um, the evil of manipulation. And the fourth tragedy taught me a lot about critical thinking. It was a very important lesson for me to learn. I was in my early 30s. And in my early 30s, I was a lion. I would fight everything. Anything that disagreed with me, I would stand on that hill and fight. And that's not a good stance to be in. Number one, it's exhausting. Number two, there's some times where you're going to be wrong, but you're going to die on that hill anyway. And that's not a good result. 
But number three, it really opened my eyes to how human beings in general act. Now, at this point, I thought I knew a lot. We'll call that the folly of youth. And, and it can be said that even today, closing in on 50 years old, that I think I know a lot today when I know that I know just enough to know that I don't know anything. We get that through wisdom, <laughs> through the acquired years of our experience. It is a privilege to be as old as I am today. But in the second evil, I had met a person who I call the Charles Manson of our time. This was a young lady who was taught, she was grown and bred by her mother, to be a master manipulator. She was very, very good at what she did, and she knew what she was doing. Whereas the third evil, the careless evil, was not born out of malevolence. The second evil definitely is born out of malevolence. This person knew... She was a master chess player in real life, and she knew how to maneuver pieces on the board to get what she wanted. She Excellent. Now, there's a lot of parallels to what she taught me and what I had learned from growing up in the church. It's just that that the lessons that I had learned growing up in the church didn't really fully resonate with me. I thought they did, but I will chalk that up to, again, me being arrogant in my youth, thinking that I knew everything as a young man. But it took a sledgehammer that nearly destroyed me to really fully understand this lesson on how people work. And this is why, and this ties into critical thinking. This ties into being able to think for yourself. You see, it used to make me angry when I would sit in church and I was told, Free thinkers are the slaves of Satan. This is what I was told in church, in both the Catholic Church and the Evangelical Church. Free thinkers are nothing more than the devil's prophet. That if you question things, you are opening yourself up to the devil and his manipulation. That you should accept without question what is being told to you by your parents and by the church. And whenever I would hear the priest or the pastor talk about this in some form, I would feel anger. And I still feel anger. I will admit that. I still feel anger when I hear that today, and I hear it a lot. That those who question are agents of evil. Now, what is that message doing? That message is a very simple message. It's saying, don't think for yourself. Let me tell you how you're supposed to think, because I know how you're supposed to think. And that if you question things, you may realize how flimsy my beliefs may be. I'm not here to question your religious beliefs. I have my own. And again, I know enough to know that I know nothing. I know enough to know that each and every human being on the planet, each living thing on the planet, has a shred of the divine in them. That we are all connected to each other because we're all part of the same cosmic dust and divine spark. This is why I fully oppose racism, sexism, and any other type of ism where we try to find differences in each other instead of similarities. I will always stand against that. But the concept of saying, do not think for yourself, let me think for you, is an elementary form of control. And as easy as it seems to me to see that, and as it was when I was 12 and 13 years old, 16 years old, 25 years old, and today 46 years old, To most people, 
it's either not apparent to them or they simply do not care and just wish to put their faith into someone else and let them do the thinking for them. This bothers me. It is because of that. It is because of that very thing that people do not want to think for themselves that we are in the world we are in today with all of its problems. And there are many. And while I want to talk about all of the positive things we can do in 2024, I would be remiss and irresponsible to not be grounded in reality. 2024 is said to be a dangerous year. Especially if you're, well, let me, let me backstep that a bit. I have friends and loved ones now in many parts of the world. Some of those parts of the world are in constant warfare. I was on a call with someone who's become very dear to me, who lives in Israel, who their midnight uh, New Year's was greeted by rockets being fired into their country and their defensive shields firing rockets back at those. Whereas here, we had fireworks going off at midnight. There, they had real fireworks. And I want to keep that in perspective, that I live in a country where I, am, I don't have rockets being fired at me. And I am grateful for that. Having served in the military, I have just one combat story. And I am fortunate and grateful that I only have one combat story. Whereas I have brothers, and when I use that word brother, I don't necessarily mean related brothers, even though all of my brothers, family, have served in war as have many of my uncles, fathers, and grandfathers. But my brothers being military brothers, the ones that I served with, saw many combat engagements. Some of them didn't make it back. And I'm grateful that I'm still here, that I was afforded this opportunity and privileged to be as old as I am today, knowing the things I do. Now, it's easy for me to deviate a little bit from my topic, so let me return on this. I was talking about how 2024 is a dangerous time for my, in my country, and I, and I felt remiss to not mention that there are places where there are actual warfare is going on, where people are actually being kidnapped, shot, murdered in front of their family members. And you need to keep that in mind. If you don't have to live it like that, count yourself blessed. But 2024 it will be a dangerous time for my country. It is an election year, and tensions in this country are boiling, with two extreme factions that hate anything that's not them. That includes people in the middle like myself. I have been told many times, you have to pick a side or you will be killed just like the other side. So, what does all that have to do with critical thinking? Thinking for yourself. The great second great evil and the fourth great tragedy of my life. It's a lot of information floating out there. How does that all tie together? I said that the fourth great tragedy of my life was a great lesson for me in learning how people think, even though I had grown up in... Uh, as a young man in the church, being told, do not think for yourself, because if you think for yourself, that allows Satan to come into your house. I was blamed for my parents, all the ills that happened in my household. It was because of my free thinking, questioning things, my music, and my hobbies, a, you know, I played role-playing games, that we were punished by God, because I just wouldn't accept what's going on. And I just did my own thing. When we are little children, up to about the age of seven, our brain is in a state. Uh, I believe they call it the theta state. And in the theta state, we are programmable. 
Little children are programmable to essentially accept everything they are told as fact by the people that they trust, without question. This is why typically if you're religious, your parents were religious, and their parents were religious, and those people's parents were religious, and so on. Because they've passed down their traditions, which became ingrained truths in those human beings' brains. Most of your behaviors will be solidified before you hit puberty. Now, there are ways to move yourself back into the theta state through things like hypnosis. And in fact, these are used in therapies to help with PTSD and other traumas of the brain to help try to reprogram them. It's a fascinating topic for another video. But ultimately, we accept these things that we are taught growing up. We accept racism growing up. We accept that my people are greater than your people because we are told that growing up. And we don't question that at all. We don't like to think for ourselves. I will say many most, in my experience, vastly most, and when I say vastly most, I really mean that. I know very few people that, want, that actually think for themselves. I know a lot of people say they do, but through their actions prove that they do not. And even I myself have fallen into the prey of believing someone's word without actually investigating its truth. The great fourth great tragedy of my life occurred when this person I told you, the second evil, and I got into a confrontation, we'll say. And this was not a romantic partner. This is not a heartbreak story like last year. This is a person who I trusted, though. She was, uh, I, and I knew I should not have trusted because I saw how she treated people. But we got into a confrontation. And I was a lion, like I said. I had to fight for everything. And, and ultimately what that confrontation stemmed from was she, would, she callously would dismiss people that I, you know, friends of mine, that were her friends as well. And I, and I wouldn't stand for that. And she said, okay. She said, I, she, she wanted me to apologize, and I wouldn't. And she said, Okay, she says, I'm, I'm going to teach you how life really works. I said, okay. What, what, well, you know, what, what can she possibly do? She's going to teach me how life works. She did. She taught me how life works. Yes, she did. It almost killed me. It almost cost me my life. She was able to, the next day, simply tell people you will no longer associate with him. And they did without question. They didn't ask why. They just did. And then she proceeded, because I was a musician, and she knew that that was a big deal for me, made sure that I would never play music again by spreading insidious rumors throughout the music scene. People who had known me for years disassociated themselves with me. No one, not one single person, came to me and asked me if this was true. They just assumed. Why did they assume? Because the person in question had a lot of social currency. She was a young lady. She was a beautiful young lady. And young women have a lot of power, especially over men. That's what she taught me. No one asked questions. They just assumed it was correct. There we go. And that was a very devastating time for me. That lasted two or three years. Had that happened in recent times, I probably would have been, I would have lost my job and had to have moved out of that city because of things like Me Too and all these other things um, where you're encouraged to be canceled now. Back then, social media hadn't really hit its most powerful strides yet, so it was localized. But that was a very important lesson to learn. 
And that came down to critical thinking. That came down to not wanting to think for ourselves. Someone tells you it's true, it's true. Always question everything. Always question the motives of someone telling you something. Always do some investigation. Today we find ourselves in a world where everyone hates everyone else that's not like them. As a man, I live in a world where I'm told that I'm an oppressor, I enslave people, I do all of these evil things that I've never done once in my life and that I stand fully against. But I am told that I must bear the punishment for an entire gender of people and race. Politically, we are so skewed that you, if you don't pick a side, you are hated by everyone else. And if you walk in the middle, you're hated by both sides. So you're truly out of place. But if you don't, if you choose a side, then you have to go along with everything they say. And either side does things that are horrific. Additionally, politics are, to me, ultimately meaningless. No effective change happens regardless of who you put into office today. I view politics like I view professional wrestling. On the camera, they hate each other. On the camera, they're accusing each other of all kinds of things. And it's done purposely and masterfully to get you, the people, up in arms. All of the problems of our world are caused by the other side. Have you noticed that? If my side was in charge, none of this would be here. The economy would be great if my side was in charge, but because your side's in charge, things are falling apart. And then those whose side is in charge and things are falling apart blame the other side for whatever, whatever reasons. No, it's the other side that's causing our problems. It's always the other side. It's always the others. See, there are way more of us than there are of them. But the only way for them to continue to hold on to the power that they have, and it is vast and it is considerable, is to keep everyone divided. And they do a great job of that. The media excels. Social media, probably one of the most damning tools of humankind. For all of the good it does, and yes, it does good, because I'm allowed to communicate with people I normally would have no contact with, it also is a great force of evil. We live in a, a world where social media controls what you think. It's exactly like the book 1984, A Brave New World. We read these books in high school, and we're living those times today. And no one bats an eye. No one thinks to question it. We just continue to blame the other side. Politics are like professional wrestling. They are. On the camera, they hate each other. Behind the camera, when the camera's off, they're buddies. And they're profiting. And the wealth of the world is almost gone. That's what they talk about, this great reset thing coming. Or Agenda 2030, or whatever words they have for it. You will own nothing and be happy. That is the mantra of the great reset. You will own nothing and be happy. You will rent. You will subscribe. You will constantly pay your money to live. We, live in, we are obsessed with materialism. Stupid materialism, things that don't mean anything. We are obsessed with it. We are obsessed with getting ahead. We are obsessed with the destruction of each other, doing what we have to do to get ahead at the cost of everyone around us. And we blame it on the other side. Politics don't matter. It doesn't matter who you put into office. It doesn't. If I could snap my fingers now and say, I have the power, I am now the President of the United States of America, 
nothing would change. I wouldn't be allowed to do any change. Even if you put your president in charge, you still got to deal with a corrupt Congress and a corrupt Senate and a corrupt judicial branch. And if you make enough noise, you suddenly disappear. You suddenly don't want to live anymore. You suddenly self-delete. You suddenly do all these evil things that they put out on the media. And everyone will take that as gospel truth. Because we don't question a thing. We just take what we're told and we accept it. So, 2024 will be a dangerous time, I think. Because with the election cycle ramping up here, people are going to be even more angry, even more incensed, even more inflamed at people not like them. There's going to be a lot of activity this year. And that's scary. It doesn't even count the wars going on around the world where those people have actual rockets landing on them. So keep that in mind. When you're told something, you must think about it first. When you are told something or told how to think, it's usually going to be to hook your emotions, to make you make emotional decisions. You have to step aside from that. You have to step away from emotional thinking and ask yourself, what are they really trying to do here? Is tribalism really in your best, you know, your best benefit? To me, human beings have been programmed and created to be slaves. We were created to be servants, to serve things. Most people are perfectly happy. I learned this in the military as well. Most people are perfectly happy to have someone tell them where to be, what to wear, what to think. Uh, The vast majority of people I've known are perfectly content with this. A lot of them will contend, no, I I have free choice and free will. But then you watch their actions, and actions always uh, speak clearer than what someone says. So watch actions. And yes, when you Start thinking for yourself that will put you at odds with people. And that's the scary part. That's the reason why people don't like to step aside from the social norms. Because no one wants to be alone. No one wants to spend their holidays by themselves. And I understand that. I've done it most of my life. And it's not fun. But you have to make that choice. Do you just go along with what people want or do you think for yourself? And you need to find other people that think for themselves. That's, that's my key in 2024. Find people who think for themselves. Do not just accept what you see in the media, on social media, from your mom. Don't accept that as the truth. So I'm going to wrap this up. The New Year's coming in. Look back at the last year. Look at what you've accomplished. Look at your the good things, the positive things. 2023 was a wrecking ball for me, but you have to have a wrecking ball to grow new foundations. So I am grateful for 2023 as much as it was very painful. 2024, I have goals. I will continue to strive for. Uh, I will continue to put out content about topics that interest me. But keep your thinking caps on. Explore. Ask questions. Until then, everyone, have a good and safe New Year. And I will see you the next time. Cheers. Cheers.